Hi, I'm Harold Harb, and today we're here at the uh, Harb Ski Systems Ski Shop and Boot Fitting Center. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the nuances and maybe some of the real keys to getting your boots on and so that they're comfortable for the day. And a lot of people complain about putting boots on, so we hear it a lot. And uh, there are some techniques that can make this much simpler, much easier, and to get your fit set up properly for the day and you'll have a much more comfortable day skiing and your boots will feel good. So the first thing you want to make sure you do is you, you want to have a dry, warm boot before you put it on. A uh, number of reasons. Wet boots don't slide, your feet don't slide very well into them. And also, the, if they're cold, the liners don't form to your foot as well. So you have to warm them up as you're skiing, which may never happen. So. And it's harder to get the liner exactly where you want it on your foot. So that's the first thing. It's key to having a successful day. The other thing is sock selection. I'm just going to show you three socks here really quickly. This is a very thin sock. And the thinner the sock, and these are all special ski socks, as you can see. They have different weaves and patterns and colors in different places because of the way the sock fits on your foot and the way it sits in the ski boot. So it, it wants to be thinner around here where you may have pressure, a little reinforcing in the heel, and then maybe a little extra padding up on the shin. So th these are all different things that different sock companies uh, use to make the experience better. And this is a middle thickness sock right here, medium thickness, and here's a full really com comfort sock with a lot of padding and this often works if your boots are getting looser and if you need to take up some space in your boots and you'll notice there are ankle pads and there are pads on the shins here there are many kinds of socks available these are just three and what I'm going to do is uh, wear a medium sock the medium sock slides in easily and it doesn't use up too much space so also, after a day of skiing, it's always good to uh, buckle the boots up properly the way, because the plastic will take a set or a mold. And, and if you don't do them up, the plastic may not wrap as well. As far as keeping the boot warm, there are numerous ways to do this. They have little blowers that go in here. Or you can put them near a radiator if you don't have a blower. Or the latest, greatest innovation is this bag is a heat bag. It's heated with, it can be plugged into the car on your way up, or it can be plugged overnight, and that's the best way. It also has extra space for goggles, gloves, hat. So all of your ski gear can be in one place, and you don't have to take your boots out overnight. You just leave them in there, plug it into the wall, and you're off and ready to go next morning without having to search for all your gear. So that's a really nice tool to have. Now we get down to the mechanics of boot putting the boot on. Okay, you'll notice that this boot has two loops, a back loop here and a front loop. And it has a power strap. First thing is tilt the boot slightly back so that it toes off the, the ground. Insert your toes and forefoot into the bottom of the boot. Grab the loop and pull the tongue to the side rather than forward. Many people get into trouble because they pull this forward and then the tongue actually pops out of the shell itself and then you've got a hard time getting it back into place. Now you'll notice what I'll do with this hand here is I slide it down on this flap and I push this flap out of the way. That's with my left hand on my left boot. And then I grab the lower flap on the lower shell with my thumb this is key to opening up this overlap of the boot right here. Pulling on the top of the tongue to the side opens this flap up so that I have a lot of space for my instep. And I slide and push my toes forward and then drive my heel down and into the boot. Okay, I see this a lot. People will do that and that's as far as they'll get. And then they'll start buckling you're not ready to start buckling because your foot isn't properly placed in the boot yet. It's not really, the heel's not back, 
and things aren't going to overlap correctly. So that's why this loop is here. So what you do with this loop is you pull up on this loop while holding with your palm of your hand the back of the shell down or push it down. This separates the liner from the plastic shell. When you do this, you can wiggle your heel back and then hold on to the strap and kick your heel back like this. Now I see a lot of people pushing like this. This doesn't help your heel to move back into the boot. You want your heel to move back into the boot so you kick towards you at an angle. And you can kick it fairly hard. Now then, pull up on the tongue a little, make sure it's seated and wiggle it back and forth a little bit. It's really important to look at these flaps and make sure that you close the lower second buckle up first and make sure that the flaps overlap correctly. I, I see this a lot where people get the low, one flap in the wrong side over the wrong side and then it binds up and it really causes some bending of the plastic that you don't want. I don't buckle the first buckle tightly, it's just very loose. I buckle this one down, make sure the flaps are right. Then I overlap the top pull about two notches on each of these, two or three. And then here's the tongue seating. You want to make sure the tongue is centered on your shin so that you have good cushioning for your shin. This is your booster or power strap. I prefer to put mine underneath the plastic rather than over the plastic because I have too much space here otherwise and this makes the liner itself snug around your foot or your leg. Insert this into the loop, pull it through, and then Velcro it on so it rests on the tongue, the upper part of the tongue. It's connected back here so that you get some support up here. This puts even pressure along the whole length of your shin and makes for a much more comfortable location for the shin and even pressure all the way up and down the shin. So once I'm in the boot, I flex it. This helps me sometimes get the toes away from the front of the boot and settles everything down. Then you can tune it for comfort or tightness as you go along. So that's your first, that's your first uh, requirement is getting the boot on, making sure it's right and that the liner is sitting in there properly and it's correctly fitting around your foot. Getting the boot off, unbuckle and I always turn the buckle slightly like this because the buckle will relatch itself without you knowing it sometimes and it's really hard to get the boot off if the buckles relatch. There, I just turn that buckle a tiny bit, undo this last and then I put the boot behind me and I push back on the back of the boot so I get some leverage to get the heel out like this. It's much harder to get the boot off if it's out here and you're trying to wiggle your foot out. This is, doesn't give you much to work with. But if it's back here and you push on the back of the boot and pull your heel out, you've got a lot of leverage to get your foot back out. It comes out really easily, slides up beautifully. Then putting it back together again the same way you found it so that the plastic keeps its shape. The boot will dry nicely even if it's done up in a bag or with your blower or even on an overnight radiator heater. The only thing you have to be careful of on a radiator here is that you don't get the plastic too hot and melt it, which has happened. Alright, so that's model one. Here's a, another model of a boot and it has a power strap as you can see. It only has a front loop. The rest is pretty much the same. And as I undo the buckles, you'll notice I turn them slightly because I don't want them relatching. Again, same thing. I turn, open this up, take this loop, pull it tongue to the side, slide my hand behind the flap, grab the lower part of the shell with my thumb, push my toes in, and as I'm pushing down, I open that up and it slides in beautifully. Make sure your tongue goes in all the way underneath the liner flaps. 
Okay, then I make sure that the flaps are right. Like this one wanted to bind, as you can see, right here. It wanted to catch like that, and that's what you have to be careful of because you can buckle it like this, and you create a really big problem. So make sure that the flaps are correctly seated, and then they slide over each other beautifully. If you do this and learn how to do this, and you go into a ski shop to buy boots or fit boots, right away the salesman's going to have a different level of respect for you. He's going to see that you know what you're doing, and uh, he's going to treat you differently because he'll think you're an educated skier, and he's not going to just sell you any old thing off the wall. There we are. A little bit of flexing to make sure my heel's back, then adjustments. These are high level intermediate boots we just, uh, I just put on for you. Now we're going to get into more of a high end competition type boot or high end high performance boot. This is slightly narrower, a little, little more rigid plastic. This is a 130. The numbers indicate a durometer or a flex index uh, for the plastic. And a one, this is a 110, just so you can see the comparison 110 here. This is 130, a little more plastic, a little stiffer plastic, a little more performance. And again, with this kind of boot, it's the same approach. You've got a loop on each side this time. One in the front, which I do exactly the same thing as I did in the other booth. I slide my hand below the upper flap, grab the lower flap with my thumb, push it out of the way, and turn the tongue to the side. You can see the, hand, the foot goes in there beautifully. Even in a high performance boot that's supposed to be known as stiff and hard to, be, hard to put on. So that's, that worked nicely. So to make sure my heel pocket again is really sitting well and I've got it all the way back. I pull up on this loop, I lean forward, got my foot and boot behind my knee and I push back on this plastic and I pull up on the liner and then I kick this back. That gets my heels seated really well and you want to do this every time you put your boot on because the material in the liner will start settling as you use your boots. And if you do this every time, that heel pocket won't go away. It'll keep building, and you'll move material out of the way, and you'll get a nice fit around your ankle. So again, this is a, a different kind of a buckle system, a modern flexi buckle, and you can see this bends here, which allows the buckle to bend to the contour or shape of the plastic, which makes for a much more smooth transition. This is a little more complicated power strap, a little beefier. But again, you'll see I put it above the plastic so that I get really good tongue contact and an even, nice even flex without any hitting or any hot spots or pressure points. And there's a nice even flexing, comfortable setup. Great. So next time we'll talk about the different boots and how you should pick boots. But this is a beginning and a very effective way to get started in the day. We'll see you next time. Bye now.